So the patient is a 50 year old female who has come with double vision on looking to left. On examination, she has left lateral rectus palsy uh, for a duration of one month. How do you approach this patient? Uh, so this patient has presented with double vision. So initially when a patient presents with double vision, we uh, see whether it is monocular or uh, binocular double vision. Why? Uh, uh, because monocular double vision might be due to uh, r local causes like ophthalmic causes. Fine, uh, fine, fine. Okay. What, what else? What else? Um, uh, then uh, we see whether uh, it is a horizontal diplopia or vertical diplopia. Well, how does it make difference to you? Uh, vertical diplopia, the image will be one above the other. Uh, in horizontal diplopia, it is uh, on either side and uh, the it worsens on looking to one side based on the muscle which is affected. Horizontal diplopia points to which muscle? Uh, horizontal diplopia, if it is on look more on looking to the uh, le left, it might be um, left le rect uh, lateral rectus palsies. On looking to the the worsening side, will be uh, that side that muscle will be affected. Okay. If it is, uh, if it is uh, vertical. If it is one above the other, then either it is either the oblique muscles or the superior or inferior recti which is involved. Okay, what else? So two steps are there. Uh. Um, then we see um, in which direction the separation of the image is maximum. Okay, um, so that will point to the site of the lesion. Uh, site, site of the lesion, sir. Which muscle is affected? Okay. Hmm. If oblique muscle is affected, what will be the images like? Uh, it will be one above the other. Is it vertical, vertical. or tilted? Um, tilted, sir. Okay, what else? Um, then uh, we ask whether the dysplopia is congenital or acquired. Uh, and, no, no, uh, it's history, so one month, no? Uh, it's a acquired condition in this case. Um, and we see that on examination it is la lateral rectus palsy. That is uh, from a most distance, okay. No, no, not in time. History to be analyzed still further. Uh, Suppose somebody get, uh, somebody get somebody get a diplopia and looking to a distance, but when look close together, there is no diplopia. What is the difference between the two? Um, if it is, it is lateral rectus uh, increases on looking uh, like lateral. It is lateral rectus palsy when the image is when there is diplopia on from far vision and near vision. It is medial rectus. Medial rectus. That is very good. Okay. Yes. Now, suppose the patient has got a tilt of the head. They say that tilt head is tilted now. What does it mean? Uh, it is a compensatory mechanism to uh, avoid diplopia. So, which are the muscles commonly? Um, the branch of which all muscles produces tilt? The oblique muscles. Oblique muscles. Okay. Yes. Any other details you want to know in this patient? Um, any other, uh, whether there is pain? That's very good. So, what are the conditions producing painful ophthalmoplegia? Um, any intraorbital pathology, like uh, any intraorbital pathology, periorbital pain, and um, then uh, it could be a intracranial pathology, like uh, which causes raised ICT. Can also then. Um, Suppose it is a Sorry. sudden onset of painful ophthalmoplegia. What are the possible sudden onset within few seconds? Um, can you get subarachnoid hemorrhage like this? Uh, yes, sir. You can and have some. So, what are the vascular causes? Uh, intracavernous bleed. Intracavernous fistula. 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 Car carotid, or carotid cavernous fistula. Okay. Then, uh, then the thrombosis uh, of the cavernous sinus can be painful. Yes, sir. Okay, posterior yes, communicating sir. artery aneurysm can produce subarachnoid bleed and third nerve and can diplopia. Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay. internal okay. carotid artery can produce painful dissec diplopia. dissection. Dissection okay, can sir. produce diplopia. So, okay, trauma can produce diplopia. No, trauma can produce diplopia. Yes, sir. What about neoplasias? You said intracranial tumor. Um, like um, a pet pituitary adenoma can cause diplopia. No, any tumor can produce diplopia provided it is affecting the 3, 4, 6 yes. nerves. Yes. It can be primary or it can be metastasis. Yes. Can you tell some inflammatory and infection the conditions can, can produce problems? Um, yes, sir. Like uh, herpes zoster. Herpes zoster. 
then peria uh, like uh, orbital periostitis or you say is a orbital cellulitis sir. no inside the orbit all the problems are there it can be cellulitis bacterial Eucar- fungal mycosis okay even spirochetal mycobacterial can produce tell some miscellaneous causes which can Di- produce painful ophthalmoplegia diabetes very good that's more common than any of this any other possibility um giant cell art uh, giant cell art arthritis rare, rare common thing suppose he has previous history of similar painful ophthalmoplegia what you uh, suspect sir migraine is a possibility migraine migraine is a possibility okay so this is how you are going to approach this patient you want to more no more questions do you want to have more questions uh, um, whether the patient has any other neurological symptoms um like any fatigue of history of fatigability points What? to my to my myasthenia so you want to so is a fit if a fluctuating rather than you say fluctuating okay yes, fluctuating okay so any other history you want to know do you want to know that this patient has a drooping of the eyes or not yes sir but yes do you want to know the habits of this patient um sir yes. habits suppose is an alcoholic patient um yes sir how um, can alcohol produce uh, a deficiency this can uh, produce vitamin uh, so vitamin b12 deficiency and b12 not b- the one b1 b1 sir what what's it called a uh, thiamine deficiency Th- what's it called Vernicase encephalopathy, sir. Vernicase encephalopathy. Yes, sir. Would you like to ask history of weight loss in this patient? Diarrhea, um, weight loss, tremor, tachycardia, flushing, palpitation. Uh, Carcinoid syndrome or malignancy. More, how many cases of carcinoid have you seen? It's very rare. Yes, sir. Have you seen cases of thyrotoxicosis? Yes, sir. Thyrotoxic. Can it produce problems? Yes, yes, sir. It can produce problems. Yes, sir. This is how you proceed further diplopia painful monocular distant oh. l tilt fluctuation separation of all points okay yes sir yes sir so here is a patient so lateral dyspalsy how many types are there lateral dyspalsy uh, how do you unilater- approach them how do you approach them unilateral or bilateral by lateral no, this patient has got a unilateral unilateral, one. unilateral. yes sir so uh, etiology depends on the site of lesion like uh, see you approach them in a very broad way it is the only lesion isolated uh, sir or is it associated with other neurological problems yes, sir if it's isolated diagnosis becomes more simple mm. common thing is ischemia vasculopathic hypertension diabetes vasculitis yes, or it can be simple trauma or it can be feature of if the bilateral particularly it can be intracranial pressure yes, would, like, would like to know the weight of this patient yes sir why um, 120 kg what will you suspect um uh, metabolic syndrome and uh, su- um, pseudo tumor what is pseudo tumor um sir so pseudo tumor cerebral inflammatory condition um, inflammation a uh, benign intracranial hypertension pseudo tumor cerebral and idiopathic idiopathic intracranial hypertension uh, seen in obese females of this age yes, they can have diplopia okay and many yes, time you can find these patients having this uh, diplopia transiently following viral infections Okay, so isolated has got specific causes but uh, uh, sorry associated has got specific causes depending upon associations okay six yes. nerve palsy or diplopia how does diplopia commonly come to you what is their complaint um diplopia patient complaints of double vision itself commonest presentation laryngeal 
communist is blurring of vision blurring of vision because one image is overlapping other image you cannot see the margins even blurred image suppose it widely separated then only you will say you are having diplopia okay otherwise the problem is i cannot focus okay. when i read one line i am seeing the letters from the line above or below that is diplopia they cannot read but they don't usually say double vision after some time when it full fledged cases you get double vision okay okay so anatomically how do you localize this uh, what are the tell me for the pathway of the sixth nerve so we'll get the anatomical diagnosis where is the nucleus situated how does it come comes out come out um sir uh, the nucleus is in the pons um then it in um Uh, is in the dorsal pons dorsal pons yes um then it travels adjacent to the uh, medial lemniscus uh, adjacent to the corticospinal tract yes um, um it innervates only the uh, the lateral no no no, the, uh, no 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 before it reaches there where does it go it enters the subarachnoid um, space then it goes vertically the, over the clivus and yes. travel to the apex of the petrous bone and enter the cavernous sinus from the cavernous sinus it comes out and passes through uh, and just to the internal carotid artery it passes after the cavernous sinus it passes pass through superior, superior. orbital fissure okay. then only tender the lateral orbits so it is a very long course hmm. so anatomically how do you diagnose each step so a couple of things we just said yesterday itself we said he hears a patient with a uh, sixth nerve palsy in the pons how do you diagnose um so in the pons a patient will have a uh, horizontal gaze palsy then uh, along with that facial nerve involvement might be there and other brain stem signs might so be there like so what are the other causes in that region um it could be ischemic then um, neoplastic any malignancy So the Wernicke encephalopathy. Wernicke sound from the pons or midbrain. Midbrain. The pathology of the Wernicke encephalopathy is the periaqueductal, mammillary bodies around that region. So here we have hemorrhage, ischemia, and demyelination. Okay. Okay. Then skull base. What are the possibilities? Skull base. Over the oh. clivus. Ah. Oh. Um. infection usually, usually it is the raised intracranial pressure and traction in that particular region and coming to subarachnoid space what are the uh, differential diagnosis you will have uh, trauma uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, the aneurysms Aneur- aneurysms infections inflammation microvascular apex of the petrous bone uh, trauma it's a petrous bone trauma base uh, okay tell me what's the gradinego syndrome um that uh, in the petrous bone the uh, it now will be involved so this is called gradinego so that is another site of localization in the cavernous sinus how do you localize uh, other cranial nerves will be involved third fourth and fifth nerves will be involved and uh, is the sympathetic involved sim- no no sim- what are the causes in the cavernous sinus Uh, cavernous sinus thrombosis um fistula fistula neoplasm pituitary you already mentioned infections yeah. internal carotid artery aneurysm everything can be there in superior orbital fissure what are the problems how do you diagnose there um other uh, patient will have other nerve involvement also cranial nerve 3 4 6 involvement will be there So in common sense, sir, no three, four, six, sir. F- fifth nerve, uh, fifth nerve, sir, sir. Where inside the common sense come to orbit? Fifth is not there. No orbit. In orbital lesions, also first fifth nerve will be involved. So what's the difference between the two? Um, in the common sense, um, whole of fifth nerve in the orbital only uh, branch. Fi- Okay, tell me what is like Tolosa Hunt syndrome. Uh, that is a cavernous sinus um, lesion, 
which uh, presents with a 3 4 uh, 3 4 and 5th cranial nerve impairment okay suppose inside the orbit is lesion what do you suspect infections yes um, malignancies malignancies okay and what are the physical findings if it's inside the orbit a uh, patient will have proptosis proptosis chemosis edema congestion and severe pain so isolated uh, sixth nerve is it congenital is one okay traumatic is next common thing and among the acute causes trauma comes first then comes the post viral then comes the microvascular like diabetes hypertension then comes intracranial hypertension then comes idiopathic and of course neoplasia so so pons with hemorrhage neoplasia subarachnoid space you said you said skull base you said subarachnoid space then you have got petrous apex cavernous sinus superior orbital fissure okay isolated you said this causes now if there is a horizontal gaze palsy where do you localize uh, in the pons in the pons okay if the facial nerve is there in the pons Bons. suppose there is sixth nerve with hemi paresis and hemi sensory loss uh, in the pons itself pons itself so suppose there is a combination of 7 5 6 8 and facial pain um. can we get an echo yes okay cavernous sinus foreigners also come okay yes. orbital we said uh, now what are the differential diagnosis isolated six nerve palsy most common cause diabetes bilateral six what are the causes it is a false localizing sign sir so what are the other false localizing signs um, other than sixth are there any other false localizing signs what do you mean by false localizing signs uh, there are definite neurological signs are present but we cannot um, an the anatomical localization is not possible so the finding is to be away from the anatomical site yes, so uh, sixth nerve is one any other any other simple things can you have papillary edema yes sir what else any other okay bilateral planter a uh, planter okay planter. A trauma microvascular unilateral congenital traction post viral so we have gone through on examination of this particular patient not only lateral rectus further evaluation revealed this patient has got this many problems can you please read yes sir on examination patient has le uh, lateral rectus palsy on the left side with left facial palsy left uh, facial yeah. upper motor or lower motor Lower, because it is le mo lower motor lower motor neuron okay mm. uh, left masticatory muscles are weak uh, which sensation which, which nerve is involved uh, trigeminal nerve Let me will you have masticatory muscle weakness in myasthenia yes sir so how do they present what's their complaint uh, uh, after chewing food for a uh, fatigability after chewing food initially oh. they'll be normal on examination, what is the finding in them? Specific finding for jo myasthenia. Jo claudication. No, no, claudication means uh, blood supply is gone. No, this is not claudication. How do they sit? How do they sit? They will not be able to close their mouth. Okay, because the masticatory muscle is weak. So how do they sit? They sit as a hand on the table and the elbow will be hand on the table and the hand will be supporting the chin. Okay. The chin will be dropping downwards and the mouth will be 24 hours open. Okay. And sensation on this patient is lost. No? Sensation is lost on the left side except the angle of jaw. Why, why, why angle of jaw is not affected? What is the inference of sensation loss on the face? The trigeminal nerve involvement. So why angle of joy is paired? Uh, uh, it is supplied by facial nerve, not trigeminal nerve. Oh dear. Facial nerve, no sensory supply on the face. Um, it uh, supplies the external or uh, the canal yes. one, but not the jaw. Angle of joy is not supplied by face. This is not, uh, no. yes. Yes. Tell me the dermatome. Which dermatome supplies that area? Um, sir. 
mandible. Angle of jaw, no? Yes. Angle of jaw, angle of mandible. But the angle. Mandible and nerve. It is supplied by C2 dermatome. Yes. The localization value, it is a lot of localization value. And corneal reflex is lost on the left side. What's afferent and what's different? Sir, for the corneal reflex, um, afferent, yes, afferent is um, fifth nerve, the ophthalmic division of fifth nerve, and efferent is seventh nerve. Seventh nerve. And the, there is sensory neural hearing loss on right. the left side. So, what, what do you make out now? Uh, the sixth nerve is affected, uh, there is seventh nerve involvement, uh, trigeminal nerve is also affected. Eight, five, six, seven, eight nerves are affected. So, what do you think? Uh, pond dilation, sir. Inside the ponds. Yes, sir. Inside the ponds, what sensation you lost? Uh, inside the ponds, um, hemisensory loss. Um, it will be dissociated or not? Yes, sir. So, when because you are hearing uh, loss, is the complaint? With sensation, with the facial palsy, where all you localize? Yesterday we localized. Seventh nerve, with the nerve, where do you localize? It it could either be the pons. If if it if it is pons, there will be associated hemiparesis or hemisensory loss. Not there. Not there. Then if it is the in the petrus. In the petrous lesions, there will be a fifth, seventh, and eighth nerve involvement can be there. If it is cavernous sinus lesion, uh, three, four, uh, six, and fifth nerve and involvement. You, you, know, you trace only the seventh nerve, you get the diagnosis. Seventh nerve, you trace. Seventh nerve with eighth nerve, where all they come together? CP angles, sir. CP so, angle. what are the points against CP angle here? Sixth nerve involvement. 16 or because of raised ocular pressure. Uh, pressure. Okay, sir. What do you expect to find the fundus? Papilledema. What is the definition of papilledema? Um, enhancement of uh, the shadow by more, more than 3 mm. So, is it optic neuritis? There is no history of pain in this patient. What is the difference between optic neuritis and papilledema? How do you differentiate? Neuritis need not be bilateral papilledema, bi usually seen bilaterally. But rarely you can have unilateral papilledema, like uh, Foster Kennedy, no? you can have. So, how do you differentiate papilledema from neuritis, optic neuritis? How do you differentiate? What is the definition of papilledema? What is the definition of optic neuritis? Papilledema is edema, non inflammatory edema of the disc. Papilledema. Other one is inflammation of the optic nerve head. Yes, sir. They are two different things. Okay. So, papilledema is different from optic neuritis. So, on examination of second grain nerve, what all things you find in optic neuritis, what all things you find in papilledema? Um, blind spot will be enlarged in papilledema. Uh, when you look in the visual field. What will be the acute vision in papilledema? Vishlekiti will be uh, normal. What will the field of vision like? Other than blind spot. Um, there will be in, in there will be scotoma will be more in uh, neuritis. Like, what will happen to the field of vision in papilledema? There will be concentric constriction of field of vision. Oh, what happens in optic neuritis? Uh, central scotoma. Central scotoma is characteristic. So that's how you differentiate between the two. Okay, equity vision and field of vision. So your thinking is what's the diagnosis now? So no, CP angle. This would be CP angle. So what's the differential diagnosis there? 
CP angle tumor is acoustic neuroma. That is very common, yes. Rare things are there. Neurofibromatosis can occur in uh, like vestibular schonoma and neurofibromatosis can occur in CP angle. That, that is called echo syndrome, no? Just, yes, sir. Oh. So, what, where is the lesion in acoustic neuroma commonly? Uh, common site is the CP angle itself. In which nerve? Eighth nerve. Yeah, what, what is the full name of the eighth nerve? Vestibular cochlear nerve. Which is seen in the vestibular component or cochlear component? V vestibular component. Otherwise called vestibular schwannoma. Vestibular schwannoma. So what are the usual symptoms of vestibular lesions? Uh, patient presents with tinnitus. Um, um, vertigo tinnitus. Vertigo tinnitus. Cerebellar okay. signs can so, be there. So, so what are the other differential diagnosis here? Yeah, but can meningioma come here? Yes, sir. What about epidermoid cyst? Yes, sir. Arachnoid cyst? Yes, sir. How do you differentiate facial nerve schwannoma from acoustic neuroma? So, acoustic neuroma will have only... Uh, uh, there will be eight, eight, eight nerve signs also. Eight in nerve symptoms yeah. will start early. Subsequently, seventh is affected. Seventh nerve schwannoma also can have deafness later stages but short with they come with facial palsy they are close together how can you suspect cholesteatoma um, when hearing is affected patient presence with hearing loss and um, when there the will be of optics media uh, yes sir see a chronic uh, a chronic hearing loss and otitis media history so what is cp angle Cerebellar continent. What are boundaries? What are structures are there? It's a triangle shaped area. What does it contain? CSF. Above you have septiplorium. Below you have septiplorial tonsil. And medullary leaves. Anteriorly. Posterior dural surface of Peter's bone and clivus. Posterior you have enter surface of pons and cerebellum, medial you got cisterns of pons and medulla and apex is the lateral recess of fourth ventricle from the lateral opening of fourth ventricle opens into CP angle so these are the communications of CP angle it's widely communicated widely related to different structures particularly fourth ventricle ok from the they can only be blocked by this process and you had a couple of nerves there so ultimately you have got a diagnosis here, we got 5, 6, 7, 8 nerves with cerebellar signs also in this patient and thus we localize to CP angle what is the etiology of CP angle tumor? what is the etiology of this acoustic neuroma? Um, why do people get it? So, a part of neurofibromatosis the genetic is, mutation the genetic mutation, which chromosome is what is the gene effect involved? Uh, in neurofibromatosis, NF2 gene. There are two types, no? NF1 and NF2. Here's NF2 is the culprit. Situated on which chromosome? 22 mutation. Usually, what does it do? What does chromosome do? It produces substance called merlin. It's really suppressing the tumors and the mutation, that suppression is gone, so they develop it. So, what are the basic difference between the two? NF1 and NF2. So, what are the other other causes for the etiology? One is excessive use of mobiles, radiation. The third cause is excess exposure to noise. They are all postulations. They can be all together in the same person. Okay. What is difference between NF1 and NF2? Yeah, you can see Lishne hand node will sometimes end up one. Where do you look for it? Where do you look for it? 
palms or soles what do you look for uh, sir um, list not just in the iris iris that's yes, correct that so is not seen in f2 nf1 is also always benign nf2 may become malignant if you get dumbbell neurofibroma okay dumbbell oh. tumor in the spine they are usually neurofibroma in nf1 but is usually schwannoma in and nf2 these are the basic differences among them so how do you confirm acoustic neuroma uh, so imaging is required uh, imaging is required for confirmation x-ray scan or what do you want uh, mri brain mri brain and what will you do uh, we look at the extent of the tumor and um surgical management is if, if the if the size is more surgical management will be required so usually surgical management is done if the patient is fit for the surgery and outcome is good but you may have deficit in the form of deafness or already damaged nerves may remain as such okay so when you go for gene testing um there are other few signs of uh, nf gene involvement hmm who all you test with the family history of acoustic neuroma um, if it's bilateral you must go for genetic study okay sir. if there is a first genetic relative with nf2 gene okay yes. affected parent sibling offspring then you must have it usual age group of this type of tumors are 40 50 60 years less than 30 invariably you have to test for genes and if you find multiple spinal tumors again you must go for testing okay, test. bilateral acoustic neuroma always test always test okay so age is important and if there is associated cutaneous schwannoma then you must check the so young patient cutaneous schwannoma multiple spinal tumors first year relative bilateral disease all are indications for genetic testing okay okay sir so how will you know this patient has got deafness um audiometry uh, from the history first of all and then you can clinically test by renees test or webers test and for confirmation you can do an audiometry can you tell one more test in relation to the testing of the nerves suppose i keep the tuning fork in my ear on my mastoid when it stops then i put it on the patients then what will you suspect uh abc test abc test sir what is shobach test is a test like that which tuning fork you use for this testing of the Ethner, strength of tuning fork. Uh, five twelve. Five twelve. Okay. So a couple of questions more. Uh, so tell some causes for sudden hearing loss. Um, sudden hearing loss is usually idiopathic. Initial uh, unilateral sensory hearing loss sudden is usually um, idiopathic. Any other cause? How do you check for stapedial reflex? Warm. It is done in the laboratory, not in the in clinic bedside. The what are the basic difference between central and peripheral vertigo? Uh, uh, peripheral vertigo changes with post. Uh, patient has vertigo on change in postural variation. That's right. Uh, and it will be more symptomatic. Um, per- then uh, central vertigo can be associated with other uh, features like uh, cerebellar signs or, or uh, nystagmus can be there in both so deafness tinnitus all points mm-hmm. to peripheral peripheral yes, symptoms pertain to ear is peripheral yes. yes central any other point suppose you make the patient stand up lie down if there is a, how long this uh, nystagmus seen in peripheral how long will see the central uh, in peripheral nystagmus might uh, only when the patient is symptomatic uh, for central peripheral nystagmus, nystagmus is seen only when you make the patient sit up 
after few seconds it stops central beep assisting okay so sudden hearing loss many causes are there infections inflammation vascular traumatic and toxins many many questions many many causes are there not only this one okay